Welcome back everyone to another episode of the Recreating Doom series and in this video we are going to do some math. So I'm going to open up 4 files in vim vector.h, vector.c, matrix.h and matrix.c. Inside of vector.h we'll define, uh, we'll do the header guard and in here we'll define our vector types. So we'll first of all begin with, the, we'll use a type def for that and we'll specify these as unions so that we can access them in multiple ways. Now in the members of this union we are going to specify a struct which is going to be a float x and y and also a uh, an array method to access the vector which is going to have two elements and uh, now we are going to specify vector 3 for this we are going to of course change the name of this and we are going to add another struct here to also allow it to access by RGB since those are commonly used notations for uh, you know vector 3 they are used to represent colors as well so we are going to change the size of the array and for vector 4 we are going to do it very similarly except that uh, uh, we now also have got four elements in the array and a W and A element here as well so that defines our four vector types we are going to leave vector.c for now we are not going to implement any operations because we don't need them yet in matrix.h we are going to go ahead and only define one matrix type we'll just paste the vector type here and in here we'll have three ways to access the matrix one is going to be through a standard flat array one is going to be through a two-dimensional array and uh, we are going to uh, remove one of these structs here and the uh, other struct we are going to use that to access it through like individual elements of the matrix by using uh, uh, this syntax so a1 through a4 then b1 to b4 and c1 to c4 and d1 to d4 matrix 4 is the only type we really need and uh, this is gonna be our basically matrix definition so now it's time to actually implement some operations on these types so if I open up my render.c, you can see that in here we require two matrices. One is the uh, projection matrix and the other is the model matrix. So we need to calculate, first of all, we are going to calculate the projection matrix. And for 2D, we need to calculate an orthographic projection matrix. An orthographic projection matrix can be calculated using this formula which uh, you can find on Wikipedia. I'll have a link in the description and we are going to use it to calculate an orthographic matrix in our matrix.c file. So we'll create a function for that. To call this function it's going to return a matrix 4 and we're going to call it mat for ortho and it will take four variables. One is a left, one is right, one is bottom and one is top and then we're going to give it a near and a far as well. So it will take these six arguments and with the help of these six arguments we are going to in matrix.h include the header and I'm going to just copy and paste this here and for the actual function we are going to define a matrix and we are going to fill it all with zeros and in the end we are going to return the matrix now for the actual values of the matrix we are going to set the correct ones that are not zero to the appropriate methods using the uh, formula that was presented earlier and with that we should have our matrix well formed and in the end we just return the result pretty awesome now it will prove useful to have a function for getting an identity matrix so we'll create a match for identity function and it will just return a function uh, an identity matrix 4 by 4 identity matrix which means all of the diagonals are going to be zero so we'll just initialize like a matrix filled with zeros and then we'll set all of the diagonal values a1 and b2 and then c3 and d4 we'll set all of the diagonals to one and this method will prove very useful so now we are going to go under render.c and create an init projection function to initialize our projection matrix and we are gonna paste this down here and for the implementation of this I am going to go ahead and create a matrix core called projection which we are gonna create using our orthographic matrix with the origin being at top left so we are gonna just supply the parameters near is gonna be negative 1 and far is gonna be 1 and now in order to set this in our shader we are gonna get the shader uh, the location of the uniform with uh, using GL get un shader uniform location actually uh, no uh, we need to just use GL get uniform location and we'll provide it with our shader program and then the name of the uniform which is projection with this location we are going to use gl uniform uh, uniform matrix for fb we are going to use gl uniform matrix for fb to uh, you know provide the matrix and we are going to use the flat array representation for that and we are going to just pass this here like that and this gl false is the reason it's here is because we don't want to normalize this and yeah that works so the next thing that we'll do is that we'll take these three functions that we have called and we'll call them one by one inside of the render initialize function and however with our current code there is there are a few problems one is that when we are setting our vertex attribute pointers we must do that after we have by uh, you know put the data in our buffers and secondly we need to use ac the actual program that we create in order to be able to you know render with it and if i run make right now nothing happens of course because we are not currently drawing anything so let's create a function to draw something on the screen we'll begin with the simplest primitive which will be a 
point and we will take a vector 2 representing the point's position and a float pole size. Uh, additionally, we will also permit the user to provide a color. And now inside of render.c, we are going to go ahead and create an implementation of this and in here we will need to set two more uniform variables. So. Uh, first of all, let's uh, create the implementation of this here. And inside of this, we might want to, uh, well, let's just call GL draw elements to actually draw our array to the screen. So we're going to use GL triangles as a type. And for the actual type of data, it's an unsigned integer. And since we are uh, providing our uh, indices in the buffer, we are going to say null here. So now we need to calculate the model matrix and put that in the uniform variable correctly here. So for a point, we first need to calculate the transformation of the point and uh, in order to move the point, we can use this simple transformation matrix and this matrix that I am showing here is in 3D space. Uh, we are going to use a 4x4 matrix, however, we are going to leave the Z value as 0. So we are going to create a function in our matrix.h header file and implement it in matrix.c that will allow us to create a transformation matrix with a vector 3 that will represent the actual transformation. So we are going to open up our matrix.h file and in here we are going to define a function called mat for translate which will take a vector 3 towards the translation and it will actually just uh, create a translation matrix for that. So for the implementation we are going to create a matrix which is going to be by default the identity matrix so that all the diagonals are one and then we are going to in the last column of the matrix we are going to set the value just like we discussed earlier so x, y and z and then we are going to return this matrix. Now in render.c we are going to use this matrix to transform our point and uh, we are going to create uh, a translation matrix by using mat for translate and we are going to convert our point uh, to a 3D point with the Z coordinate as 0 and then we are going to create a model for now it's going to be just equal to translation matrix and uh, later on we'll multiply different matrices together and in here in order to set this we are going to create a model location as a global variable so that we can calculate you know get the model location once and uh, then we don't have to actually keep doing it again so that would be better for performance so we are going to get it like that in the initialize shader function and when we are drawing the point we are going to use uniform matrix for fv with all of the default parameters and the uh, uh, you know flat array representation of the matrix to actually get this and now in order to test this out we are going to go under our main.c and i'm going to go ahead and uh, in here let me just uh, rearrange this a bit I'm going to move this up here and after we have done clearing we can draw everything we want between these two and we are going to draw a point so for the point let's say at 100 by 100 and the size is gonna be 5 and the color we are gonna uh, actually uh, we are gonna specify the white color here and currently of course size has no effect but let's test this and you can see that nothing appears on the screen the reason for this is that our actual point is too small to be visible so now we need to scale it to be a bit larger so for that we will use this scaling matrix. So now we are going to go under matrix.h and create a new function for scaling the matrix which will take another vector, uh, just a vector 3 which will be the scaling actual scaling vector. And now we are going to copy the code for the identity matrix since the scale matrix is very similar except that instead of using 1 here we use scale.x scale.y and scale.z. The d4 is 1. And in here we can just calculate our scaling matrix by quite easily by using math for scale. And for the actual value we are going to use size and size on the x while the z is going to be 1. However, we need to figure out a way to combine these matrices together uh, because currently these are two separate matrices and we need to multiply them in order to get a single model matrix. So for this we will go under our matrix.h header file and create a new function called mat4 underscore multiply and it will take two matrices and basically multiply them. Now for multiplying them I'm gonna use this basic mathematical formula just to uh, create this here and I'm going to go over create a matrix4 called result and we are not gonna initialize it actually because we are gonna change every value anyways. So we will now learn uh, run a for loop here and we'll just you know use the standard method of multiplying matrices. So uh, we'll run uh, two for loops actually one for the you know columns and one for the rows and then we are going to uh, just use this um, basic formula here to actually multiply those matrices together and uh, uh, then we can go into render.c and we can uh, check this out by using math for multiply to multiply the scale and the translation matrix together and remember the order of this matters.
Now to test this, let me open up main.c and in here, let me try to position this. Uh, well, first of all, let's run this at 100 by 100. You can see we get our small white point here. And I'm going to go ahead and, for example, I can change its uh, width and height to be at the exact center of the screen by using width by 2 and height by 2 as the position of this point. And if I do that and then I run this, so let me just run this. What you should see is that uh, we now get the point and it's exactly at the center of the screen. So this means that our point drawing code is basically working perfectly and remember what i said about uh, the order of this mat uh, matters so if i uh, change the order of the operands of the multiply you can see we get nothing on the screen so it doesn't work so we need to make sure we do scale multiplied by translation and not the other way around now the next functionality that I'd like to add is to allow the user to draw arbitrary quads and also lines from one point to another. So first let's start with the quad ones and of course when we are drawing quads we would like to be able to rotate them as well. So now we will construct the final part of our transformation matrices and that is a rotation matrix. Now we could use this matrix for rotation in 2D space however when we are working with 3D it would be more useful to have a generalized rotation uh, function that would allow us to rotate about any axis so instead we'll be using this rotation matrix which will allow us to rotate uh, about any arbitrary axis and we can use it of course to rotate in 2d space as well by specifying the axis as the z axis so for the matrix we are going to go under our matrix rotate and create a mat4 underscore rotate here a function which will take an axis along with an angle and now we are going to implement this function here i'm going to just paste the implementation here directly since uh, the actual uh, you know uh, matrix was pretty long so it would take quite a while to type out and we need to now create a function for allowing us to normalize our vector so we are going to create a function called vec3 normalize because that's what is something we need here and for normalizing we'll also need to calculate the vector's length so we'll create two functions for that and uh, now we'll open up our vector.c which uh, we did not even create so we'll create that and in here i'm going to course include vector.h and implement these functions now for the actual length we are going to just return the square root of v dot x plus v dot uh, multiplied by v dot x you know basically use the pythagorean theorem uh, pythagorean theorem for that and for normalizing this i'm going to uh, first of all get the length of the vector so uh, like that and we are going to just divide every component of the vector by that length and return that and in case the length is zero this will return infinity so now let's go under our main.c actually matrix.c and in here you can see that we is not giving any error anymore and now inside of renderer uh, we can create another function here that will allow us to render a quad which will with a specified center and the size will be a vector 2 and we'll also pro uh, be, have the ability to uh, have an angle to draw the quad at and now for this we are going to just copy all of the draw point functions but we are going to add a rotation matrix in here as well first of all let me rename this stuff so we use the correct size and center now and uh, then we we need to add the rotation matrix so for that we'll just create a rotation matrix and for 2d rotation we'll rotate around the z axis so for the axis let's just specify the uh, 0 0 1 which is the z axis and we'll just pass in the angle here directly and remember the angle here needs to be in radians and now we need to multiply this and we're going to multiply it first the scale and then the rotation like that and once we have done that, we are going to go under main.c and we are going to call render draw quad with a vector 2 and uh, we are going to uh, draw it at 100 by 100 and let's draw a 40 by 40 quad here. So let's draw it 40 by 40 and for the angle, let's just let it remain 0 for now and let's specify a yellow color for this quad. By the way, I had a small typing error. This actually needs to be plus and not multiply. Uh, and I accidentally put multiply in there. And now you can see we get a yellow quad here. And now to make things fun, let's try rotating it. So we can rotate it by half of pi and that would give us a 90 degree rotation. And since we have got a perfect square, that shouldn't actually change anything. And we still get the same quad because it's scare and rotating a scare by 90 degrees doesn't really change anything but we'll rotate it by 45 degrees and now you can see that we indeed do get a rotated shape here so that means our function is working now all that's left is to add line drawing so i'm gonna remove the uh, other code for drawing other stuff and let me go ahead and close these files and in render.h let's create a new function here which is going to be used for drawing lines it's going to take two points so one is going to be called p0 the starting of the uh, line and another is p1 and then also a width for the line and of course a color as well now we'll implement this here and for the actual implementation this is going to be not as straightforward as the others 
To understand the drawing of lines, let us look at this diagram. As you can see, we are drawing a line between the points P0 to P1. Now, in this case, if we want to draw this line from a quad, we need to calculate the correct rotation axis and along with the correct size for the line. It is clear that the size of the line is just supposed to be the length of the line between P0 and P1, which we can calculate quite easily using the uh, distance formula. We can just calculate the distance between P0 and P1 and that will give us the length of the line. And uh, we can scale it by that length. However, for rotation, as you can see, we are supposed to rotate it by this angle theta that's represented here and we can calculate it using trigonometry so we know that the tan of this theta is going to be equal to y over x and in this case the y and x will be calculated by getting the difference of p1 and p0 y and x and um, then we can just apply the inverse tangent function onto that and that will give us the correct value for the angle which we can then apply to our rotation in order to get a perfect line and as far as the position of our line is concerned, we know that our quad that we generated in OpenGL is centered, uh, its uh, origin is at the center. Therefore, in order to get the correct position, we'll need to get the uh, midpoint of between point 0.1 and point 0.0. So basically, we'll get the midpoint of that and we'll uh, apply the, our translation matrix with that value. So now let's implement that in code. So for that, I'm going to go here and create a value called x, which is going to be p1.x minus p0.x and similarly y. And now we will need to calculate the width, which for which we will use the simple Pythagoras theorem. We will just take the square root, call the width r, kind of according to mathematical convention, and uh, add the squares and then take the square root. And for the angle, we are going to use the h and 2f function with the appropriate y and x value. And then we are going to basically copy the whole of this. Of course, we are going to change the values here. And we are going to make it so that uh, the... Uh, actual values we are going to apply the midpoint formula for the actual size and make sure that it's in the exact center and uh, for the scale we are going to pass uh, the width on the y-axis and on the x-axis we are going to cal pass in our calculated length the using Pythagoras theorem and that's pretty much it uh, the angle is going to be left at default uh, you know the one we calculated and then in here I'm going to draw a line from the top left to the center uh, to the bottom right of the screen to kind of see how well this algorithm performs uh, you know whether it works correctly or not but if I run this you can see that uh, well it does draw a line but it was supposed to draw a line from the top left corner to the bottom corner and it's now drawing it incorrectly from this corner to that one the reason is that uh, because of the way our uh, we have got our coordinate system organized we need to do this the y option needs to be inverted and now you can see it works and uh, now we are gonna go here and we are gonna copy this and I'm gonna whip together a small test program and uh, in here, first of all, we'll draw two lines in the shape of an X to kind of test whether this uh, uh, works or not, and it should work. And then we are going to just draw a point as well at 100, 100 uh, of size 2 with white color. And uh, you know, this is just a test program to test whether our rendering is working as intended. And we are going to also draw a quad, and we are going to put it at, uh, say, 900 and uh, 100. And for the size, let's just say 50 by 50, and the angle we are going to... Uh, say angle very we're going to create a variable here in a second and uh, for the color let's just make it yellow and C doesn't guess types automatically and yeah so now let's go up here let's create the actual angle variable and we are going to increase the angle continuously here so we're gonna uh, say angle plus equal let's just say for example point one that's gonna be the speed and let's do delta here and uh, it's giving us a warning let's remove unnecessary includes and now let's test our final application and you can see that it's uh, well it's rotating a bit too slow so i'm gonna go down here and uh, uh, yeah let's uh, let's just increase this a bit so you can see we are multiplying it by 0 0.1 let's do uh, for example 0.7 and now if I run this, you can see that we get a rotating yellow quad with lines and a small point here as well. And that means that, uh, yeah, it's pretty much working. We have got like a working 2D rendering system set up. And now we can, in the next video, we can finally get started with quad loading. Until then, this is pretty much it for this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Make sure to like and subscribe as well so you don't miss the next video. And bye.